After watching this video, you should have a fundamental understanding of how you can make qualitative predictions of whether two substances will mix or not by constructing PEC diagrams or potential energy versus configuration diagrams. I want to just talk briefly first about configurational stability. When we're thinking about mixing, we can say that in general, if you have a system, and here in my example I have a two particle system, and I'm on the left I'm representing four possible configurations where the particles are not mixed, we know that through random motion the particles are very likely to be found in a mixed state if that's all we consider. So it would be much more probable for these two particles to be found in one of the mixed configurations represented on the right hand side, or a state of higher configurational stability than in one of the more constrained states or lower configurational stability that we find on the left. So in general, random motion leads to states of higher number of configurations. Now we also have to take into consideration attractive forces or the potential energy between particles. For example, imagine there's an attractive force between the particles represented in the left hand part of this diagram. And it can be such that those attractive forces can trap a system in state of lower number of configurations overall. And in this case, the attractive forces are limiting the number of configurations because the attractive forces hold the particles together. And there's an energy cost to move to one of the higher configurational states. This is a situation where potential energy favors the lower configurational state, but as we increase temperature, the higher potential energy state, in this case where the particles are separate or mixed, is more favored. Now, there's also situations where there's actually more configurations when substances don't mix than when they do. And this seems a little odd, but it, here's an example. On the left-hand side here, I have the blue and the red particles. And you can see that when they're mixed, there's only a certain number of configurations, for example, that, could, that is accessible to the system. In the unmixed state, though, there are many more configurations accessible. Therefore, sometimes unmixed has a higher number of configurations than the mixed state. So you can't always assume that random motion will lead to mixing. And in fact, random motion in this uh, situation leads to unmixing, so to speak, or the system moving to configurations where the substances are not mixed. OK, so we have to take into account uh, the potential energy as related to attractive forces as well as, the, as what's favored in terms of configurational stability, mixed or unmixed. Now let's take a look at some examples and see, what, see if we can make some predictions. Let's start off by taking a look at water and methanol. First of all, we know that water and methanol mix very well. So let's use the Peck diagram to further understand why these mix so well. If we plot water and methanol unmixed, on the PEC diagram, we can see that in general it's slightly higher potential energy unmixed as compared to mixed. In addition, there is a higher number of configurations when water and methanol mix versus unmixed. So both factors, the energetic factor or the potential energy change, as well as the configurational factor, favor water and methanol mixing. And they dissolve in each other very well. So in the situation where both factors favor mixing, we can always predict that the substances will mix. And in this case, we know that there's a substantial change in configurations that's really a dominant effect here. The potential energy doesn't change much, but it does contribute to these two mixing. Now let's take a look at water and sugar. First of all, we know water and sugar mix. In other words, sugar dissolves in water. Let's take a look at the Peck diagram based on what we know about these substances. It turns out that in the unmixed state, the water sugar unmixed is of lower potential energy as compared to the mixed state. Therefore, mixing is energetically unfavored. But we know that sugar dissolves in water. So therefore, we can conclude that there must be a large configurational gain when sugar mixes or dissolves in water. And this is true. The number of configurations is much greater when sugar dissolves in water than in the unmixed state. So in this situation, the dominant factor at normal temperatures, where we observe sugar dissolving in water, is the increase in number of configurations. Now we also know that in a situation where we have potential energy lower for one state and higher in another, that an increase in temperature will put energy into the system such that there's a higher likelihood of the system being found in the higher configurational state. And in this situation, that means that 
uh, sugar becomes actually more soluble as you increase the temperature because the input of energy favors now the higher potential energy state, which in this case is the higher configurational state as well, which is the mixed state. Now let's take a look at another example. In this case, we're going to take a look at water and hexane. This is an interesting one because water and hexane is essentially analogous to water and oil. We know that they do not mix. It turns out that the difference in potential energy between mixed and unmixed is fairly negligible. So in this situation, again, configurational changes is the dominant factor. And in this situation, the mixed state is of lower number of configurations than the unmixed state. So therefore, through random motion, the probability of this, the system being in a state of unmixed versus mixed is much higher. So in general, water and hexane do not mix due to the loss in configurations on moving from unmixed to mixed. This is where potential energy is not a factor really that's relevant, so configurational changes becomes the dominant factor. And mixing would reduce the number of configurations when water and hexane mix, so they do not mix. Now, there's a term that's used quite often to describe things like water and hexane. It's called like dissolves like. And it's a term you can use to make predictions of whether or not things mix. And I want to talk about this just for a moment. This relates to the structure of the substances, or molecular structure, and how similar they are. It turns out if you take a look at the structure of water versus hexane, as I have here, you can basically see that they are not alike. Whereas if I look at water and methanol, I can see that there are structural similarities. I have the OH group in methanol, which is a component of the structure of water. So these two are structurally very similar. Therefore, like dissolves like, it really is a predictive statement based on the structure of the molecules. And in addition, water can engage in hydrogen bonding, as so can methanol. Whereas the primary intermolecular force for hexane is dispersion, whereas in water, the dominant factor tends to be hydrogen bonding. This is how we can use like dissolves like to make predictions. Okay, let's review the three examples that we looked at. With water methanol, we had a situation where both the energetic and configurational aspects favored mixing. And we know that water and methanol mix very well. So random motion leads to mixing. And there's also a potential energy drop, slight, but it does favor mixing. With water hexane, we can see that random motion actually leads to no mixing because the unmixed state is of higher configurations. And, and in the case of water and sugar, we have a situation where energetic stability favors the unmixed state, but configurational stability favors the mixed state. In this situation, we have a temperature dependence towards what state is the stable state at whatever temperature we're at. It turns out that at normal temperatures, sugar dissolves quite well in water, so the configurational stability is dominant. And if you increase the temperature, you can provide enough energy to dissolve even more sugar by moving any unmixed states to mixed states. Therefore, sugar also becomes less soluble as you decrease the temperature. 